Hey everybody, my name is Dara O'Bear and I'd like to welcome you back to Maya Mondays. So today we're going to be talking about Set Driven Key and I love Set Driven Key. It's one of my favorite tools inside of Maya. I use it all the time. Hopefully after this video you guys will see the power of it and implement it into your work also because it, it really is super cool. So let's just start off with something really basic and kind of set the foundation for what we're going to be talking about here. Key framing in Maya, normally what you're doing is you're taking an object and you're recording its state to time. Time is the attribute that you're basically referencing to when you set keyframes, right? So if we hit the S key at frame one, move forward in time, translate this sphere over, maybe change some of its attributes, something like that, hit the S key one more time, we've now recorded two different states of this sphere and we've recorded those states to a given time frame, right? Time is the attribute that we're keying to. The thing that's kind of cool about keyframing in animation systems is obviously you're recording these hero states or these keyframes, but you also get, you know, these nice function curves that allow you to adjust how those attributes are going to change as they interpolate between these hero states. And set driven key gives us kind of the same functionality, but instead of referencing time, we can query any other attribute inside of Maya. So we're basically recording key states or hero states of objects to an attribute in Maya. And it gives us the same function curve, the same functionality that traditional keyframing gives us, except instead of referencing time, we're referencing some arbitrary value on some node inside of Maya. So it's really, really powerful and super, uh, super, super cool. I love it. So let's look at a simple example. Let's just go ahead and we'll grab a sphere. We're going to use this sphere to uh, control some nodes inside of Maya. Let's just kind of move in here and look at our hand. What we're going to do is we're going to get our joints turned on here. And we're going to just use set driven keys so that when I move this sphere up and down in Y, this guy kind of closes his fingers up. So we'll just grab a few of these joints. Just grab a selection, something like that. And if we go to our rotate tool and see what channel, rotate Z is what we want to do with those guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and say animate keys, set driven key, bring up the set window. So it loads all those objects as my possible nodes that I can have driven by the driver. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab the sphere. We'll say uh, load driver. We'll bring up our channel box for this guy really fast so you can see what we're doing here. So what attribute do we want to be the driving node that we're the driving attribute that we're referencing. We'll just do translate Y on that. We'll grab all of those fingers and we're going to key their rotate Z. So what I can do is I can just say key. As soon as I hit key, we're going to be recording a state of this sphere's Y position and these Z rotation values on those fingers. So if we hit key, as soon as we do that, you can see now those fingers now have this Z channel kind of uh, kind of driven. Or has an attribute drive in it. So if we use our set driven key window, you can actually click on an object and it actually will select that node inside of your viewport. So it's also sort of a, an easy way of selecting something. So we can go ahead and drive those guys up. We'll say, you know what? Let's go back to all of these fingers. So we'll select all of those guys. We'll grab that rotate Z. We'll spin those guys sort of down like that. We'll hit the key button one more time. We'll go back and grab that sphere, and as I start to translate this sphere down, what's going to happen is those fingers are going to start to move up. Now, notice what happens when I overpass that um, value that we set. It clamps it, right? It doesn't keep interpolating that Z rotation. It basically just records those positions, right? And as I mentioned before, the thing that's really cool about this is for any of these, um, any of these nodes, right, you grab a couple of these fingers, like maybe this one and this one, you bring up the graph editor, you're going to get this function curve that represents the interpolation between those. So if I wanted that finger to behave slightly differently, you know, maybe do a really fast out on it, I can just grab something like that. And now as I move this, you'll see that that finger is going to behave different than the other fingers because of that function curve tweak or modification that we made. So that's set driven key. That's the basic idea behind it. And again, obviously, if you wanted to have, you know, more keyframes, like if I, if I went, like, so let's say I want his finger to close, and if I keep moving it up, I want him to open back up a tiny bit. I can grab all of those guys, right? Go back to that rotate Z uh, channel and just, you know, go back here and put another keyframe in that function curve, right? So you can have multiple keyframes in that. It doesn't just have to be two keys, right? So it has a little bit of a kind of clamps down and then comes back a little bit. So again, that's the basics of what set driven key is. So let's look at a, a slightly more complex example. So what we've got here is we've got this Dave character and we ran a contest a little while ago that was sort of an animation slash still, uh, still frame rendering contest. 
And this model was originally rigged inside of Max, done by Paul Neal. He did an amazing facial rig on the character, and I had to kind of reverse engineer that inside of Mayan. I used Set Driven Key to try to match the functionality that he had in Max, because things are a little bit different in Max and Mayan. I used Set Driven Key to sort of get to his facial rig, and I think it, it actually came out pretty cool. So the way this works is I've got this, um, this UI for the face, and really what the UI is doing, if I grab this and I move it around, it looks like I'm just, you know, positioning that character's jaw, the corner, that right corner, and it, you know, it's sort of, if I go to the upper right-hand side or the upper left-hand side, it sort of looks like I've grabbed that jaw virtually and I'm moving it around, and really what we're doing here is we're actually transitioning between a, duff, a bunch of different morph targets or blend shapes, and I'm using Set Driven Key to turn on and off the different blend shapes, and this controller is actually changing four different blend shapes, and those blend shapes are essentially just a little, um, a little mesh, right? So this is really the geometry that I'm changing is this kind of mesh outline, and then um, kind of point constraint onto that mesh outline are little bones that then ultimately drag the skinned character around. That's sort of the, the overall rig of what's going on with that. And then on top of that, this doesn't have anything to do with set driven key, but I'll just point it out because I'll provide this file to you guys. If you want to dive into it and look at it, you can. Then on top of that, I've got a little, uh, little handle that allows me to take each one of those joints and put an offset on top of what the set driven key is doing. So it gives you sort of a little extra level of um, tweakability on top of it. But really the cool thing here is the fact that this slider is really moving four different blend shapes. And again, it uses that um, sort of clamping automatic a clamping effect that Set Driven Key gives us to turn those on and off in the right areas. And if we look at our Set Driven Key window here, I'll just load this guy up through our blend shape window. Let's go grab blend shape here. Oops, wrong one. Let's put that back to uh, two up mode. And we'll grab this side and we'll make that be a blend shape. Sorry about that. And this is also pretty cool. You can change the orientation of this, right? So if, if we look at what's going on here, you can see these are the blend shapes. These four blend shapes down here, you can see as I move this around, it's kind of adjusting those values of, you know, is it the full right corner? As I start to move this up, it'll, it'll transition the left, the upper. And then the the bottom one starts to transition on, and then obviously if I go left or right, it's going to turn the left one on and then the right one off. So it's just blending between these four different blend shapes, but the end result feels very organic. Like I've just grabbed the corner of that character's mouth and I'm moving it around. And you know that really is the power of of set driven key. And this one, what we're doing is we're we're moving an actual um, a jawbone, so we're changing joint orientation um, based on this little slider. And then some of these other ones are just turning on different blend shapes just simple sliders, single sliders. So the one when you want to dive in and really look at what's going on is the corner ones are pretty pretty cool. These other ones are simple, just blend shapes, um, the up and down ones. But the ones that have uh, squares are actually transitioning either between joints or four different blend shapes. So that's it for a set driven key inside of Maya. Hopefully it makes sense to you guys. Again, it's, it's just an awesome tool. I, I highly recommend uh, playing around with it if you haven't been using it in the past. Thanks again for tuning in to Maya Mondays, and I'll talk to you all next week. Cheers.